Hi there. Today is part eight of my reading of Khalil Gibran's The Prophet, published in 1923. It recently entered the public domain, which means you can read it yourself. But if you would like to join me as I continue reading, I would love to have you for company. If you have not watched the previous chapters, please do so before continuing. And now, it gives me great pleasure to read to you The Prophet by Khalil Gibran. Then a hermit, who visited the city once a year, came forth and said, Speak to us of pleasure. And he answered, saying, Pleasure is a freedom song, but it is not freedom. It is the blossoming of your desires, but it is not their fruit. It is a depth calling unto a height, but it is not the deep nor the high. It is the caged taking wing. But it is not space encompassed. I, in very truth, pleasure is a freedom song, and I fain would have you sing it with fullness of heart, yet I would not have you lose your hearts in the singing. Some of your youth seek pleasure as if it were all, and they judged and rebuked. I would not judge nor rebuke them. I would have them seek, for they shall find pleasure, but not her alone. Seven are her sisters, and the least of them is more beautiful than pleasure. Have you not heard of the man who was digging in the earth for roots and found a treasure? And some of your elders remember pleasures with regret, like wrongs committed in drunkenness. But regret is the beclouding of the mind, and not its chastisement. They should remember their pleasures with gratitude, as they would the harvest of a summer. Yes, if it comforts them to regret, let them be comforted. And there are among you those who are neither young to seek nor old to remember, and in their fear of seeking and remembering, they shun all pleasures, lest they neglect the spirit or offend against it. But even in their foregoing is their pleasure, and thus they too find a treasure, though they dig for roots with quivering hands. But tell me, who is he that can offend the spirit? Shall the nightingale offend the stillness of the night, or the firefly, the stars? And shall your flame or your smoke burden the wind? Think you the spirit is a still pool which you can trouble with the staff? Oftentimes, in denying yourself pleasure, you do but store the desire in the recesses of your being. Who knows but that which seems omitted today waits for tomorrow. Even your body knows its heritage and its rightful need and will not be deceived. And your body is the harp of your soul. And it is yours to bring forth sweet music from it or confused sounds. And now you ask in your heart, how shall we distinguish that which is good in pleasure from that which is not good? Go to your fields and your gardens, and you shall learn that it is the pleasure of the bee to gather honey of the flower, but it is also the pleasure of the flower to yield its honey to the bee. For to the bee, a flower is a fountain of life, and to the flower, a bee is a messenger of love. And to both bee and flower, the giving and the receiving of pleasure is a need and an ecstasy. People of Orphalese, be in your pleasures like the flowers and the bees. And a poet said, Speak to us of beauty. And he answered, where shall you seek beauty, and how shall you find her, unless she herself be your way and your guide? And how shall you speak of her, except she be the weaver of your speech? The aggrieved and the injured say, Beauty is kind and gentle. Like a young mother half shy of her own glory, she walks among us. And the passionate say, Nay, beauty is a thing of might and dread. Like the tempest, she shakes the earth beneath us and the sky above us. The tired and the weary say, Beauty is of soft whisperings. She speaks in our spirit. Her voice yields to our silences like a faint light that quivers in fear of the shadow. But the restless say, we have heard her shouting among the mountains, and with her cries came the sound of hoofs and the beating of wings and the roaring of lions. At night, the watchmen of the city say, Beauty shall rise with the dawn from the east. And at noontide, the toilers and the wayfarers say, We have seen her leaning over the earth from the windows of the sunset. And 
In winter, say the snowbound, she shall come with the spring leaping upon the hills. And in the summer heat, the reapers say, we have seen her dancing with the autumn leaves, and we saw a drift of snow in her hair. All things have you said of beauty, yet in truth you spoke not of her but of needs unsatisfied. And beauty is not a need but an ecstasy. It is not a mouth thirsting nor an empty hand stretched forth, but rather a heart inflamed and a soul enchanted. It is not the image you would see nor the song you would hear, but rather an image you see though you close your eyes and a song you hear though you shut your ears. It is not the sap within the furrowed bank, nor a wing attached to a claw, but rather a garden forever in bloom, and a flock of angels forever in flight. People of Orphalis, beauty is life when life unveils her holy face. But you are life, and you are the veil. Beauty is eternity gazing at itself in a mirror. But you are eternity, and you are the mirror. And the old priest said, Speak to us of religion. And he said, Have I spoken this day of aught else? Is not religion all deeds and all reflection? And that which is neither deed nor reflection, but a wonder and a surprise ever springing in the soul, even while the hands hew the stone or tan the loom? Who can separate his faith from his actions, or his belief from his occupations? Who can spread his hours before him saying this for god and this for myself this for my soul and this other for my body all your hours are wings that beat through space for self to self he who wears his morality but as his best garment were better naked the wind and the sun will tear no holes in his skin and he who defines his conduct by ethics imprisons his songbird in a cage the freest song comes not through bars and wires, and he to whom worshipping is a window, to open but also to shut, has not yet visited the house of his soul whose windows are from dawn to dawn. Your daily life is your temple and your religion. Whenever you enter into it, take with you your all. Take the slow and the forge and the mallet and the lute, the things you have fashioned in necessity or for delight. For in reverie you cannot rise above your achievements, nor fall lower than your failures, and take with you all men. For in adoration you cannot fly higher than their hopes, nor humble yourself lower than their despair. And if you would know God, be not therefore a solver of riddles. Rather look about you, and you shall see him playing with your children. And look into space, you shall see him walking in the cloud, outstretching his arms in the lightning and the descending in rain. You shall see him smiling in flowers, then rising and waving his hands in trees. Then Almitra spoke, saying, we would ask now of death. And he said, You would know the secret of death, but how shall you find it unless you seek it in the heart of life? The owl whose night-bound eyes are blind unto the day cannot unveil the mystery of light. If you would indeed behold the spirit of death upon your heart, wide unto the body of life, for life and death are one, even as the river and the sea are one. In the depth of your hopes and desires lies your silent knowledge of the beyond, and like seeds dreaming beneath the snow, your heart dreams of spring. Trust the dreams, for in them is hidden the gate of eternity. Your fear of death is but the trembling of the shepherd when he stands before the king, whose hand is to be laid upon him in honour. Is the shepherd not joyful beneath his trembling, that he shall wear the mark of the king? Yet is he not more mindful of his trembling? But what is it to die but to stand naked in the wind and to melt into the sun? And what is it to cease breathing but to free the breath from its restless tides, that it may rise and expand and seek God unencumbered? Only when you drink from the river of silence shall you indeed sing. And when you have reached the mountain top, then you shall begin to climb. And when the earth shall claim your limbs, then shall you truly dance. The end of part eight. 
We have one last chapter to end. If you cannot wait for me to continue and want to read it yourself, you can look for it on the Gutenberg Project. I will leave the link in the description box. But I would love to have your company, so please do join me again. Till next time, go grab a book to read or a pen to write and let your imagination take you anywhere. Be anyone, do anything.